Okay, so next um, we've got our render set sorted now. I'm quite happy with our lighting. Um, what I want to do is set up a little the turntable now. And you could go as adventurous as you want with this kind of thing. Well, I'm just going to make a simple little platform for it to sit on. I mean, you don't even have to do this, but... Um, what I might have to do is actually grab a, a controller in a second. Move it out of the way a second. Just... It's a rough. I have to move a ring up or in a sec. There we go. I'm going to put it on a little platform. Make sure the platform is on the floor as well. And I want to just make it like a smoother edge, so let's just add a quick. Edge loop on the. Oops, I've got a edge floor technique, let's turn it off. Um, what I can do as well is just turn off, uh, delete the bomb as well. So that's just a really simple one. Also, just want to be a bit more adventurous, hit the tab key here and just Paint selection there. Not extrude. A couple of extrudes here, just in, in, up. Just making tight edges there to hold the edge. And a little podium, a little character. I need to make it bigger. I'm just gonna pop her on there like that. Can make that a bit bigger, but flatten it. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is grab the main controller of hers. So I have to go inside there, a bit confusing. And then I'm going to just shift select and parent it. So now I want to move this, she goes with it. Uh, we need the ring to go with her as well. So what I could do is parent that to the thing as well. Just press P to parent. Okay, great. And now I'm going to make this 200 frames, make sure it's 25 actually, FPS, just look at 200, make sure, and I'm going to hit S keyframe, so I'm keyframing the turntable, I'm going to print S again, so let's, you could just do the rotate Y I think it is, just double check. Yeah, we'll rotate it Y. Let's go minus 360 for a full, full turn. Come on. Let's try that again. Up to you which way you go. It's amazing. Change that to three sixty. See it all later this time. Or maybe we've got a three five nine. Oh, sorry, it's for keyframes. So I need to just highlight my two keyframes. I've had it on stepped in clamps, we've been blocking animation or something. 
So let's just change it to linear. Now it's important you change it to linear even if uh, you didn't have it on stepped and clamped. And what that's going to do is move, have it moving around at a, the same pace the whole time. And I've picked 200 frames because we don't want to go on forever because it's a lot of rendering. But we want it to be a nice slow enough that you can kind of enjoy the model as it goes around. And you can loop this as well. So if you've got an After Effects or Premiere, you can just duplicate your, your image sequence. Because it's linear, it's going to go at the same pace, just carry on as if... Oops. Just carry on. So there we go. Could look through my camera, just see what we're getting. See how I'm, I'm cutting off here, actually. Good job I checked. So I'll just pull that back a bit. Further back you are, the quicker it renders off. It's another tip. Um, let's just lock the camera now. So that's me sorted. Control no Alt one on the keyboard turns off controllers. You can hide pretty much everything I guess. Apart from the geometry, but um just turn extra joints off as well. There we go. Give your podium a different colour if you want as well, different shader. And you want to make sure another good reason to animate the podium is because it's exactly in the centre. What I mean by that is you don't get wobbly turntables because it's use a cylinder, the pivot point's right in the middle, and it just means it's nice in the centre. Very standard turntable shot this. We do a test render just to finish it up. But let's go back to the render settings before we batch render this. I'm gonna leave it at 720, that's fine. But let's hit the frame range here. So first thing we need to do is change it from frame and the frame animation setting is to name. Hashtag extension. So what that's going to do is give the name of the frame, so the file it's going to render, the number, which is the hashtag, and the extension, which will be dot .exr in our case. So the image format should be exr, because that gives you the best quality image, gives you transparency, alpha channels, and stuff like that. And just going forward in the future, exr is kind of what we what we use in production and stuff. So let's make the start frame 1 to 200 and check your camera's the right camera. Nothing worse if you render the wrong camera. Uh, 200 frames of the perspective view maybe <laughs> just like looking at the floor um, and the image size. Double check the settings, yeah. Cool. So I'm going to come over to the rendering tab now Two different ways you can render with Arnold. Uh, I recommend using the sequencer or a batch render. Now with my, you should get the free version of Arnold. Um, sometimes you get a watermark, so just depending if it's installed properly. Maybe do a test, see if you get the watermark. But uh, to get around that anyway, just render with the sequencer. So let's open this box. Choose where you want to save it. So whether you are remotely working here on on your system, put it in your um, in 
know what's it called. OneDrive. So you render it on your OneDrive so you can download the files from home. Um at to home, sorry, or you can render just straight to your kind of local drive as well if you're on your own laptop. So I'm gonna do it on my own laptop here. So it's gonna to go to my project folder that I'm working in. Just gonna select that. Fine to go there. Make sure the camera again. And we don't need to worry about this stuff as well. So just click render sequence. And what you'll find is it will start rendering. So I'll just show you this first frame as it goes. I'll speed up the, the video. And it's going to go on again and do the next one. So it's quite nice that you can see what it looks like first. I'll just show you where that's going to save to now. Um, obviously it's going to be quite tough when it's rendering. Actually, I'll just pause it. Uh, if I come through to Gary's work, for spot animation, and I'm just coming to the folder images. Um, I've got a few other things in here, but you can see the pose test 001.exr. Just open that up and see my first render there. So it's looks like going to list them down here all the way to 200 frames. Um, and then I'll be importing them in After Effects in the next step. So I'll let this kind of finish off, I'll stop the video here, and we'll take a look at what we've got when we're finished.